Blessings and welcome to your program, Shalom, Shalom, with your host, Dr. Manning from Pelzer, Reverend Dexter Pelzer, and our Amen. special host and spiritual mom, Dr. Mary Kay Baxter. Amen. Amen. So, Mary, would you like to say hello to the studio audience? Oh, yes. Praise the Lord. We're very happy to be here. We're excited what God's going to do today, and we're glad to, that you join us in this program. Amen. 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 And Dexter? Yeah. Can you pray for the program before I start? Amen. Amen. Father, we just come to you. We come boldly to your throne of grace, Lord. We are so thankful for your loving kindness over us, Lord. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to come and fire and power not only on this altar, but also in everyone's home that is listening in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask you to open up our eyes to see, our ears to hear, and our hearts to receive your truth and only your truth, Lord. And anoint us here to pour forth your truth in the, and your love into our brothers and sisters, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, today's program is going to be about Mary's latest book, A Divine Revelation of Satan's Deception. And this is a very important book because it reveals to us the deceptions of the enemy for our times. And I was going over with her chapter 12, and it was just one chapter, because we were studying it for the Spanish program, and it was so amazing. And it is going to be eye-opening to you because the Lord is going to give you strategies of how to defeat the enemy. So um, with no further ado, Dexter, um, how, let's ask Sister Mary about Satan's deceptions. Amen. Amen. And so, Mary, this is a book that you wrote a couple years ago, released mm -hmm. your latest book. And like you, you keep telling us, it's amazing to me. Forty years ago is when the Lord took her to hell. Forty years ago, 1976. And this mm -hmm. is really important because after 40 years, that's when Israel came out of the wilderness and into the promised land. We really believe this is an important time of releasing a revelation from that. And this latest book, just released a couple of years ago, is what the Lord held back from Mary in her mind, images and, and things that happened in hell, and then released them just recently. So there are new revelations in this book. It's all new that is just wonderful and amazing because it teaches us the ways of the demonic realm and how we can fight the spiritual war and have victory in the name of Jesus. So Mary, why well, don't you tell us about um, some revelations from the book? Okay, the book really will not be two years old till next April. And God gave me this like off and on for years to write because when he appeared to me, am I supposed to be Spanish tense? No, no. Uh, okay. just English. In 1976, I was a young housewife and a mother and he said, uh, you will not reveal everything I show to you at this time, but in the future you will write another book that will go with this book about other details of hell and then you're not going to tell all of that. So this second book is so powerful that it talks about the deception that Satan comes in the churches. It talks about Dexter, the um, seducing of, like we have great travail in prayer meetings. Uh -huh. So someone will come in and you think they're standing in the gap with you and they're really full of the devil. And eventually they stop your intercessory, stop your prayers. It may take a couple of three weeks. But they filter in the churches, and I didn't know none of that. God taught me. And in this book, in chapter 12, that Marcel was talking about, it's in full detail how we can be seduced by the enemy and think people are friends when they're really working for Satan, Dexter. So that's the whole thing about it. We've got to have discernment, and we've got to understand that the enemy uses our love sometimes to deceive us on levels we never dreamed, Dexter. Yeah, and so, so there's times in the church that people come in and they're actually on assignment from the enemy. Yes. And we don't even know that. And so in this day and this hour, and the Lord speaks a lot about this in the end times, there will be a lot of false teachers, a lot of false prophets, a lot of false apostles, and they will bring forth, and Jezebels and other spirits that will come into the church and bring forth destruction. Even one of the letters of the seven letters in Revelation to the churches talks about the spirit of Jezebel and Jezebel actually coming into the church to seduce and destroy the saints. And this is really important that we understand this is, 
the devil will use people on earth that will be obedient to him to come in and do his destructive purposes and bring them right into the very doors of the church. And these people will sit in the pews of the church. So okay. why don't you tell us a little okay. bit more about that, what we should expect. Okay, this is out of my book, what Jesus Christ showed to me. Because when Christ appeared to me, I was saved and had the Holy Ghost. And he appeared to me in a human form and actually translated me by his power. I was in the spirit into hell. Okay, we went on a journey three hours a night, and he showed me the abode of the dead for 30 nights. And this is in here, and it says, Then Jesus said, Come, I want to show you something. And we moved into another area, and Jesus caused light to shine. And, and he, even the demons were cremated by his own fire, Jesus's. Any demon that the fire didn't touch screamed and ran away. We came to a large opening. And as I looked, I saw many evil things going on. And it was like a pool of quicksand, Dexter, and Dunn was with the fire in the pool. It was hideous. Demons were coming. They were lead, uh, throwing skeletons by the hundreds with black chains around them. The souls were screaming, oh, my God. I didn't know hell was real. I mocked. I was an atheist. I made fun. Oh, my God, hell is real. This is real. And it goes on to tell they were witchcraft workers, Dexter, sorcerers working for Satan himself. And mm. Satan promised them a kingdom. And I know tonight a lot of you that are in the occult are watching this. And this is for you because hell is your kingdom if you continue to do the works of darkness, honey. And we're here tonight to let you know you must repent. And then there's a scripture to cover you. It's in Romans. In Romans, it says, whosoever, and I'll find it, call upon the name of the, the Lord, Lord shall, shall be, be saved. saved. Romans 10, 9. Mm -hmm. And it says, if you confess your, with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, it's so simple, you will be saved. From the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's the way God made the law. That is the way it goes. It's a truth, absolute truth. For the scriptures say, whosoever believe on him shall not be put to shame. But there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. Right? And the Bible says, for whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So we want you to know the word covers you. If you hear these horrible things we say tonight, it's very real. I walked in the borders of hell with Jesus. I heard the screams, Dexter, of the dead, saying, why didn't, weren't we warned? Why were we so deceived of Satan to be used of him to cause evil things to happen to the innocent? And I'm telling you, it's real, Dexter. We have encountered several witches in our walks trying to lead them to Jesus Christ and tell them how much God loves them. And we've rebuked them and we've talked to them. But the, the fact of the matter remains, it's always up to you and your heart. If you really want Christ, you can have him. Right, Dexter? That's right. And that's the power of the blood of the Lamb. It can yes. cover your yes. sins, even yes. witchcraft. It matters sure not. Sure does. Murders, witchcraft. It, you know, it doesn't matter. When you come to Jesus, and here's the other thing. A lot of the people in the occult are looking for power, and a lot of the young people today are looking for power. But I'm telling you, the power is by the Holy Spirit. The power is by Almighty God, the true power and the real power. And when you come to him and are filled by the Holy Spirit... Then 1 Corinthians 12 becomes active. The gifts of the Spirit being miracles, signs, and wonders. Healings can be done because now you're a vessel for the Most High God. You've given your life to Jesus Christ who died on the cross to forgive your sins. He shed his blood so your sins would be forgiven. And now you will experience the true power of God because, first of all, he'll wash you clean. As far as the east is from the west, so far are your sins removed from you when you believe in Jesus Christ and give your life to him, when you truly repent of all those sins. And what's Dexter, amazing, go, go ahead. ahead. My, My job, Dexter, <clears throat> is to put the fear of the Lord in people yeah. that, that are doing these things because I saw your end, honey. 17 miles high, Dexter, there's circles of jail cells in hell from the belly. 17 miles of witches, warlocks, devil's souls burning 
that used to be alive on the face of this earth for centuries. And there they're in the middle, and Satan himself, Dexter, comes and throws fireballs and says, I'll burn you more if you don't praise me. And they have but to I worship hate you them. as much as Christians, yes. And there's a point, he hates them, because many of them I remember in your book, Mama, described that the devil promised them that they would be glorified and they would have a kingdom and power. That's right. And, but when they came into hell, he just mocked him and said, I lied to you, I deceived you, now you will be punished for all eternity, yes, and that's you will true. worship me. And if you don't oh, worship God. me, the fire and the punishment over him came even greater. This is the devil. He is a liar and a deceiver. He is the father of liars. That is his domain. He promises people power, and what they get is destruction and hell and eternal damnation. In the lake of fire, they will be forever burning in ever. pain and agony. It will never end. There will be oh. no death. There is no separation from this pain and this agony. And I'm telling you, God makes it clear, you shall have no other idols before me. You can have Ouija boards, you can have horoscopes, you can have different degrees of this. You, there is only one God over the heavens and the earth, and he, de, he alone deser, re, deserves your worship and your praise. No other thing gives you the answers in life. Seances, all these things, they are all false and demonic. They are enforced by demons, the fallen angels. There is only one way, the word says there is one way, the truth and the life to salvation, that is Jesus Christ. Right. And he alone should be worshiped and glorified. And the word says in James chapter 1 that if you lack wisdom or anything about anything that's happening in your life, you simply ask God and he will give it to his children. This will be divine wisdom and the truth. Yes. What you get from Satan is lies and deceptions that will ultimately lead to your destruction. Never look for yes. the truth through anyone but the almighty God anyone else and and naturally the bible but dexter also jesus cried in hell tears he was in a human form he cried marcel so much he said i died for these if they'd only believed me if they'd only turned to me I, they would not be here and he said yes they had power with the devil yes they could do many wicked things but as i stood with the lord uh, dexter skeletons in chains would be pulled by screaming some of them were backsliders. Some of them were sorcerers. Some of them were people that blasphemed God. And you could hear them say, oh, my God, hell is real. I didn't believe it. Yeah. I cursed the preacher when he prayed. Another one said, my aunt tried to get me to be saved. I spit in her face. Chain after chain taken to sections in hell of the lifetime of sin they did on the earth. It's in Luke and it's in Galatians. And that's what I, God showed it to me. I have a, a call from God to warn you to repent of your weakness and turn back to God Almighty. Amen? Yeah. And, and we don't pray, Marisol, right, to anyone else but the Father, God Amen. Almighty. We don't pray to other saints Amen. and ask to them the to intercede Jesus. on our behalf. That is idolatry. And, and those saints that are represented are represented by demons. You're praying actually to the demonic realm. It's very important we understand that. Amen, Dick. There is one Father, then there is the Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for you, and then Trinity. there is the Holy Spirit. There is a Trinity. You pray to the Father in the name of Jesus. That is what Jesus taught us, and this is the only way, this is the only one you pray to. You don't ask for any information or guidance from your life. Crystal ball, seances, reading your palm, these are all demonic. Yes. You do not play in these areas. You are mixing the demonic with God, and he will That's not right, have dangerous. it. You will have no other God before him, none other. And they are dangerous because then you are giving the devil open doors into your mind, your heart, your soul, and spirit to destroy you and your family. That's you right, are giving, you are choosing to go into the demonic realm when you do that, and you're opening the doors to the father of lies who is a what? He steals, kills, and destroys. Yes, Dexter. And you're, now that door is open, but there is always, that's what I love about the Lord, it matters not how deep you are in it. It matters not. You simply call on the Lord, and you will be saved. You give your life to Him, and He'll wash you clean, and you will discover the love of a father who Amen. loves you and now calls you his son and his daughter. The devil never can give you that. 
He will give you everlasting fire and torment. That's right, Dick. What God will give you is everlasting life in Jesus Christ. And I have to say another testimony, Marcel. Is it okay? I walked on with Jesus in hell, past burning, screaming souls and demons laughing, saying, we deceived you. We passed by many things I had seen before, such as pits of raging boiling fire, mm -hmm. and opening to the earth in which skeletons and black objects were falling. It seemed if I was seeing a panoramic view of hell. Everywhere I looked, souls were being tortured by demons. Many were clothed in fire, Dexter. There was no flesh on their skeletons. For a little while before it melted off like hot lava and slid down around their feet, they would scream, help me, God, help me. Their bones would come dry and worms would crawl, Dexter, out of their bones. And God cried. I was crying, but I was in the spirit. And it's talking about eternity without Almighty God. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. You know, there's some, a part here where the Lord gives you a revelation, and a vision within the revelation <clears throat> where you see how not only are people that do not know the Lord deceive, but even Christians themselves, and how you saw the word Ichabod above a church and how the enemy infiltrated. And, and, and I want you to tell that story because <coughs> it, it shows the wisdom and the sermon <coughs> that we need to have. Amen? In a minute. Okay. You know, in this story, <coughs> it is amazing. We need the Holy Spirit to help us to discern the truth and to discern people's hearts and and we have to guard the anointing that God has given us. We have to guard our altars. We have to guard our churches. Because, you know, we are in a war. And, and we cannot be ignorant of Satan's attacks against the church. Amen? And here and in your book, you talk about how um, <coughs> these people infiltrated the church. And after five years, Dexter, the church was in total decay and it was practically in <coughs> darkness and almost empty. And Marisol, that's actually in the word, in the letters to the seven churches of Revelation. One of the churches, he tells them, I will remove my lampstand from you and you and the church will die <laughs> if you do not repent and overcome. And in the letter to the church of Thyatira in, Re in Revelation 2, verse 20, Jesus himself, these are really important letters because Jesus is talking to the church after his form. He's already raised from the dead and sitting at the right hand of the Father. But he's giving a grave warning to these churches, to the seven <laughs> churches. He says, nevertheless, I have a few things against you, again, to this specific church. Because you allow that woman, Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, I want that to sink in to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. And I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality, and she did not repent. Indeed, I will cast her into a sickbed, and those who commit adultery with her went into great tribulation, unless they repent of their deeds. I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am one who searches the minds and the hearts. And I will give to each one of you according to your works. And then he calls on them to repent and to overcome. This is very important. The devil will infiltrate the churches with people like this. And his, his job is to take the lampstand of the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ out of that church. So it's dead. It has no power. Even the word when it is spoken has no power. The lampstand and the Holy Spirit is removed. This is in the letters yes. to the churches in Revelation as a warning yes. to the churches today yes. because these letters are written to all the churches for all time. We know that from the way John wrote it. This is not just for that day. It is for today. And because of that, we need to have discernment and we need to know by their fruits they will be known, the false prophetesses, the false prophets. Those that come in and cause division, those that break up families, 
those that cause people to be seduced into sexual immorality, these are not God's servants. These are ones brought in to destroy. And even God gives them room to repent. But when they do not, believe me, his, his word is true. He will come in and invade that church to bring it back to righteousness if it can. Otherwise, if the church decides to reject our repentance, even their lampstand can be removed, as it was in that case. So, Dexter, that's so true. Um, when I was down there with Jesus, I remembered so much. Uh, I was raised in church, thank God. But when I was down there with him, it, you know, these thoughts of seeing skeletons burning, and it could have been me when I was backslidden on the, the Lord years before, because I was a sinner. But when I walked among the dead, I realized, Dexter, they didn't have a fear of God, those that died and went to hell. I realized that God gives us so many chances. And then for a testimony about the occult, I was um, in a church one time down south, and it was a large church, five, about 500 members. And back then, they all want to pray for the speaker before I spoke. But as they were getting ready to pray for me, the, the people were on the side of me holding my arms up, and somebody hit me in the stomach with their fist really hard. And then I screamed, couldn't speak, fell backwards. And everybody opened their eyes to see what went on. And I knew who it was. I watched them. And nobody seemed to know where it came from because they all had their eyes shut. So then later on, I was in their intercessory prayer group that day. And there was a woman came in there that I knew was not of God. And there was a dear daughter in travail. You know, the Bible says till Zion travails, there's no birth, no soul saved. You got to travail and pray for God to save the lost, which Amen. we know God can do it by his spirit. There are about 12 of us in there. And this same woman went over and put her hands on that woman's stomach and prayed in a strange language. And their travail stopped. And she got up and left the room. And I said, why did you do that? She was travailing in the Holy Spirit for people to be saved. She said, oh, no, she was out of order. So what I did, I talked to one of the leaders of the church, and they said, oh, they're fine. They run the sound system. They came from a, uh, here to help us build God's house. It's awesome. The music's awesome. Said, you're off. I said, okay, but I'm still going to pray. A few months later, there was an article in the paper that that whole church burnt down. And the police had, the white fire department said they had never seen such a chemical that had set that church on fire. And all around the, the, the pulpit was hoofs of an animal. And that the only thing left was the pulpit. And I know that I know that the enemy enters in to stop travail in a church. I was in Canada at another church. And they took in a lady that was supposed to have the homeless in the street. This is really true. And, and what happened, Marcel, she came in and did paintings and things for the church. And what it was, their whole church, she ended up being a witch, and they found a letter she wrote in her own blood. How she was assigned by the devil to destroy that church. She destroyed the whole church. Wow. Both of them got cancer. The, the husband and the wife got cancer. And the church was destroyed. Wow. So, you know, so it's clear. We have to have wisdom, discernment. The Word of God says those that are guided by the Holy Spirit are the true sons and daughters. And God shows us when they're up to stuff because one of them was going to bring me a glass of water and fell on their face and had to crawl away from the platform. I've wow. encountered many, many encounters with things Satan's tried to do. He wow. don't want the gospel preached. He don't want us to, like he's That's given, right. teaching the word. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, I hope we've made you hungry for the word. And I want to let you know that Sister Mary, today, will, today is October the 3rd, right? Mm -hmm. And Sister Mary will be in a revival along with Brother Dexter and myself at Harvest Celebration Church. The pastor is Pastor Leslie Peters in Northridge, California. The address of the church is 19444 
Wisner Center Drive, the name of the church, Harvest Celebration, 19444 Business Center Drive in Northridge. We will start on Friday at 7.30 p.m. If you, um, you can write to shalomshalom.org if you didn't get the address. You can go to Sister Mary Kay Baxter's Facebook page. The address is 19444 Business Center Drive. We'll be there on Revival for three days. And God is moving. He's healing miracles, signs, and wonders. And you can hear about Sister Mary's revelation about hell and heaven and Satan's deception. We love you. And I want, brother, we only have like half a minute. So, Dexter, can you pray to close the program? Amen. Yeah, Father, we ask for discernment. Yes. We need to be, our churches need to be holy. And we, your lampstand is precious. That is you, Lord. We want your presence in our churches. So we ask you right now, anoint us with discernment and give us wisdom, Lord, in this day, in this season, this hour, to walk in holiness as a church, Lord, and to discern the attacks of the enemy, even within our church, Father. We ask for this because we choose to fulfill the calling of our churches before you. So now we ask you to fill us with the sermon, Holy Spirit, release that precious gift and activate it within our church and within our leaders because we choose the truth and we choose your ways and we choose to walk in holiness in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Remember to go to our YouTube page, shalomshalom.org. Sister Mary, you want to say goodbye to the studio audience? Amen. Praise God. Thank you for listening. Amen. Amen. Remember, Harvest Celebration Church in Northridge, California. God bless you and see you next time. Blessing.